Git has proven to us time and time again that is one of the best productivity tool for programmers ever, right? It helps you do a lot of things in a short amount of time. The problem is, well, few people are using Git at its full capacity, right? Most people can only do commit, pull and push. And that's about it. So let's take a look at a few features that will expand your knowledge about Git and help you be more productive at work. Number one, the stash. What is it and what does it do? Well, the stash is, as the name implies, a temporary place where you can uh, add your modifications and stash them or store them for a while until you need them again, right? So for example, here I have a simple repository and if I say status, let's see, git status. See, I have one modification, but let's say that, oh wait, I have to work on something else and it has to be on the same branch. So what do I do? Well, it's pretty simple. What you have to do is simply say git stash. And by just saying that, git will take all your modifications, all the, all the files you modified here, and it's going to store them in a temporary place, right? So you're gonna say, okay, git stash. Wait a bit, and there we go. If I say git status again, as you can see, we have no more modifications there. Now, to see that we have saved the modifications, what you can do is git stash list. And then we list all the stashes that you've created so far. In my, in my case, I only have one that was on uh, this commit, right? So this is the one that we have already created right now. And to, to add the modifications back, all you have to do is uh, use one of the commands git stash pop or git stash apply. We're gonna use git stash pop in this case. So if you do git stash pop here, it's going to get us to the previously, uh, to the previous state, right? Where we had this world.c file modified. So, and if we try to do a git stash list again, you'll notice that we have an empty list, basically because we did git stash pop. But now let's try again, let's try another git stash. Right, we have this one. And if we do git stash list, we have the same, the same stash right there. What you can do instead of pop, you can say apply. So we can say git stash apply. And that applies the last stash. And if you do git stash, let me clear the screen a bit. Git stash list. You will notice that we still have that stash um, saved up. Why? Because git stash apply only takes the last stash saved, but doesn't actually remove it from the history. So we can reapply it once again, if you need to, or you can apply it on multiple branches or stuff like that. All right, so I hope this is useful. Actually, this is, I think when you're working on um, a feature and all of a sudden your boss comes in and is like, well, we need this bug fix like right about now. So can you actually start working on it? And you're like, oh, okay, let, let me just do git stash. And all of a sudden you have, uh, every single change that you've done, unless you've committed, of course, uh, every single change that you've done since the last commit uh, saved somewhere else. And you can start working from the last commit, from the last commit onwards, which is nice if you haven't committed anything already. So let's say you've already committed part of your, let's say refactoring, right? And um, your boss comes in then and says, okay, well, you have to fix this bug like right now. What do you do? Well, you cannot stash anymore because you've already committed and uh, what wh what's the solution here? There are many solutions actually. Let's discuss about one. So the second tactic is to use multiple local branches. This strategy only works if you apply before committing. Okay, so once you've already committed to the main branch, uh, there's something different that you can do, but it's more complicated, right? So uh, before committing, here we are with the same uh, modifications. And what we have to do is first, let's take a look at the branches. So git branch, we only have one master branch. That's simple enough, but uh, let's create a new one. We can say git branch and I don't know, uh, test modifications for some reason. I'm going to call it that. And we say git branch again. You'll notice that now we have a second one. 
and to actually select the second one as you notice uh, that star that star right there means that it's selected so now we're on master if you do git checkout checkout test modifications it says switch to branch test modification if we can say git status we have the modified files right there and all we have to do next is say git let's say commit dash am and some changes go here with some with some good text explaining explaining it and if you try to say git status we have no longer any changes and we should have our change right there now the third feature people don't really think about when committing some changes in git is selective commits basically instead of committing every single file you've modified you can actually select some files right pick some uh, for a commit and then pick the others for another commit and then have them one on top of each other that helps grouping functionality inside your repository and it's easier to revert if needed all right so let's take a look at how you can actually do this first i have modified two files in this repository and let's say we want one of the file to be inside a commit and another inside another commit so to do this let's first take a look at the modifications right we have draw.c and geometry.c what we have to do simply is say git add the file that we want to add usually i, I have a star behind it and say draw.c to select it properly and then we go git status as you can see it moved it to the staged files when committing we are always adding to the commit the files that are staged beforehand we have used the git commit dash am what does that do is say all right add that a stands for add all um tracked files to the staged area okay and that's going to basically commit all the changes you've got um uh, minus the files that you've added all right so instead of saying that right now we're going to say git commit dash m and that's going to just simply commit whatever it's got on the stage area and that's whatever we, we gave it manually right this time it was it's only draw draw c you might have more files in there so you can say git commit dash m and say a message like uh draw algorithm modifications and now if we try to let's clear the console and say git status as you can see we only have geometry.c and draw.c was already committed in the last one now what we have to do is simply do the same thing for the geometry.c file but we can also add all the files since that's the only one left that's what i usually do i just um create the first few selective commits and the last one is usually just a add all uh tracked files to the stage area because we don't really care about uh selecting them individually right we don't want to miss anything that's tracked and modified as well so all you have to do here is say git commit dash am and say uh geometry uh i don't know shapes changed that's just an example i i the modifications are made up so don't guys uh criticize me about the commit messages it's <laughs> it's fine so as you can see now if i say git status uh, we only get this much uh information we don't have anything that has been changed and hasn't been committed right so that's how you can actually uh selectively commit your files which really um, helps out when grouping functionalities and when you want to for example revert a functionality it's much much easier pick one of the features and try and use them as much as possible all of, all of the three features are actually interlinked so you basically get almost the same feature as in controlling what you commit but in a different manner so really it's uh, which one you see most fit for your working environment all right so thanks for watching and i hope you got something out of it see you next time